Welcome to Unit 1, Why jQuery? So why would you use jQuery? Well, the first reason is that it's popular. Now, normally that's a horrible reason to use something. You shouldn't use something just because everybody else does, but there's some practical good reasons why this makes sense. Number one, with jQuery being so popular, a lot of people have spent a lot of energy making sure that jQuery is as bug-free as possible and, is, and also performs very, very well. On the flip side, you also have a lot of people using jQuery. That means if you have any problems, most likely someone's already run into that problem and posted about it someplace. It's also very easy to find other developers who know jQuery. That means if you need to expand your team, it's going to be a heck of a lot easier to find other people who can work with it. On top of that, it's really kind of like a universal translator for web browsers. As we know, web browsers like to do things in different ways. Now, it's not as bad as it used to be, but we still have issues where some browsers, and I'll pick one by random, Internet Explorer, may do things a little bit different than other browsers. Well, one thing that jQuery does is just kind of make it easier and give you one particular way of doing things that's going to work across all the different browsers. And on top of that, jQuery is laser focused on what people do most. When you look at the core features of jQuery, it lines up very well with what a typical front end Ajax based application is going to do. So what does jQuery do? Well, the first thing it does is make it very easy to find stuff in the DOM. And by DOM, we're talking about essentially what is in the web browser when you're viewing a web page. So for example, if you're doing form validation, typically you have to find that form field to see what it is. jQuery makes that easy. Now, once you've found something, jQuery also makes it very easy to change those things. So for example, you could set that form field or maybe you have a div that you want to set with some text when a form is not filled in correctly. Again, jQuery makes this really, really easy. And then finally, it makes Ajax one of the most important aspects of client-based applications. It makes that incredibly easy. Now, jQuery does more than what you're seeing right now. It has more features than this. But these, thing, these three things represent probably the most important aspects of jQuery and what you'll be doing most of the time with the library. So how do you get jQuery? Well, the first question you'll have is what version? jQuery comes in a 1.x and a 2.x version. Now I'm saying 1.x because at the time that you're watching this video, I don't know what the exact point version will be. The important thing to keep in mind here is what the 1.x version means and what the 2.x version means. 1.x is a backwards compatible version that supports IE 6, 7, and 8. 2.x represents a more future-oriented, modern standards-based version of jQuery. If you don't have to worry about the older IEs, then the 2.x branch is what you want. The next question you have is what about the compressed or production version versus the uncompressed or development version? Now, best practices for JavaScript developers tells us that when we take our JavaScript files, we want to compress them when we put them on their website. That makes the files much smaller and therefore quicker to download. But that compression ends up taking the source code and essentially making it unreadable. So normally you only do that as you move something from your development server to production. Now for our cases, we're going to be using jQuery. We won't be looking at the jQuery source code. So the compressed or production version should be fine for us. I definitely recommend later on taking a look at the jQuery source code because it's kind of cool. And next you have another choice of, do you want to actually download the bits or use a CDN? CDN stands for a content delivery network. It's essentially one URL where a JavaScript file can be found. And what's nice is that if you use the CDN and somebody else uses the CDN, when the user comes to the website, they may have already grabbed the library from the CDN. So they have a cached version in their browser. 
So that makes things even quicker for the user. So what do I recommend? Easy, start with the 2.x branch and don't worry about the older IE versions. Every single thing I'll be showing you in this video will work in either version, but to make things simpler, we'll use 2.x. Go ahead and use the compressed or minified version. Again, we won't be digging into the jQuery source code. I recommend you do that later, but while you're learning, just grab the compressed version. And go ahead and use the CDN. Now, even with me saying all that, go ahead and grab a copy anyway. I found that sometimes I'm at a place without Wi-Fi and I still want to ensure that I have a copy of jQuery in case I want to try something. So here is a quick example. Okay, here is an incredibly simple file. It has a grand total of 13 lines and no real HTML inside the body at all. But you can see where I'm using the CDN version of jQuery, in this case, version 2.1.1. For the rest of the examples in this video, you can use this as a starting place for your code samples and just modify it from here. So where can you learn more about jQuery? Well, the best place would be jQuery.com. On the website, you could see a long list of resources, including obviously the documentation, a lot of examples, and a good set of books as well. And if you're interested, you can also learn more about the foundation and the people behind jQuery. jQuery was started a long time ago, back in 2005 by one person, John Resig, but now has a lot of people and a lot of big companies behind it, which just shows you how well supported jQuery is.